I would like to thank Joe and Ari for giving us an opportunity to come here and be of service and to share our experience with all of you. Um, because it's really important for us to know who it is that's in our communities, right? And what we can do to support the people that are coming into our communities so they can be successful. Because I just want to say that the majority of people that are incarcerated today are getting out. So um, with that being said, my name is Virginia Burton. I'm 46 year old mother of three. Um, I've served three separate terms um, in the Washington Correction Center for Women, a direct result of addiction and my personal life choices. Um, I freed myself from the bondage of, prison, of the prison system and it hasn't been easy. I also want to add that I did not free myself without help. This kind of stuff is really hard to do on your own. Um, in 2010, I would step out of prison for the last time. My struggle with the criminal justice system did not, did not end there, but my time spent in the Department of Corrections did. It seems like such a simple thing to stop committing crimes that cause a person to go to prison. Even today with my past experience, when I talk to another person that is experiencing addiction and struggles, my first thought is just stop doing what you're doing. But that's easier said than done. It's something that I was unable to accomplish for decades. I'm a believer that we human beings function through patterns. Um, I've been a spectator and a player in my own life for a very long time. Sometimes making choices against my own will, or so it seemed. I paid attention to the things that occurred in my life closely. It took me a long time to realize that I'm doing what I know and have done what I know for so long that it would take an abrupt interruption in my life in order for me to change those patterns. One might think that prison would qualify as an abrupt interruption. However, the life that I was living was far more intimidating than a prison sentence. So prison offered me respite at the time that it occurred. By the time I made it to prison, I was grateful for the time and space between me and the life I was living. I really needed a break from the insanity. I grew up in Tacoma, Washington to two, two addict parents. I watched as our house was raided by detectives in 1976 and my father was hauled off to jail. A few nights later, his crime partner would come into our home and hold a gun to my head, threatening my mother to keep her mouth shut about their dealings. I was four years old at the time. I received little comfort from my mother after he left our home. I felt like I was left to sink or swim. But that's what it was like in our house, kind of like survival of the fittest. I had no idea what I was missing out on in life and how this event would later impact me. I just knew that I needed to be strong and take care of myself right then. Two years later, I would be introduced to drugs by my mother. She was also married to another man who was diagnosed with colon cancer, so she had access to a lot of marijuana. She planned to smoke with us kids when he went uh, into the city to get treatment. I was scared at the thought of using and did not want to participate. I knew my dad went to prison for drugs. However, the pressure for me to join them was really powerful. No one, uh, no one wanted me to tell, so they intimidated me until I chose to join in. My mother was not really a kid person, but decided to have seven of us. I was number three in the lineup and was expected to be much more together than a child my age should have been. It was not, it was not an awesome upbringing. Um, I grew up with the same kind of expectations of myself. I expected myself to be grown up, to be mature, and to make adult decisions. I was an overachiever in school and had a knack for absorbing information. I guess my mom recognized this and decided I could handle more than the average six-year-old. I did not realize what I did to myself by adopting on this mindset until I was in my 40s. As the years went on, my addiction evolved into terrible coping skills. I would endure years of abuse by her, her husbands, and my brother. I was using hard narcotics by the time I was 12 and abandoned my dream of becoming an attorney. I spent most of my time trying to avoid physical abuse by her. She had, a, she had few coping skills and frequently took things out on me. I became more angry as time went on and started acting out in school. I would get locked up for the first time be right before turning 13. That's when the prison cycle began. By the time I was 15, I knew my fate was to spend time in a prison cell. I was a regular cocaine user at this time and would buy, sell, and use whatever drugs I could get my hands on to escape my reality. I left home for good at the age of 15. At 16, I was raped by a man my mother was buying drugs from. Someone watched him rape me, told someone else, and a group of seven people kidnapped me from a friend's house, handcuffed me, and took me to a place outside of Eatonville, Washington to beat me, cut my hair off, spray paint me, and handcuffed me to the handle of a car while another car drove toward me to punish me for being honest about the rape. I was never the same after that. When I was dropped off at my mother's house, she told me to leave and said that's what I deserved. I never felt so alone in my life. <clears throat> a few short months later, 
The same group of people dumped accelerant under my grandma's house and set it on fire thinking I was in there. I cannot begin to tell you how many times I sat with my head in my hands and cried wondering why God would play such a nasty trick on me and send me to a place here, to send me here to, a play, to such a terrible place. I hated life. I decided there was no God and took my life into my own hands. I attempted suicide for the first time before the age of 17. As the years progressed, my life continued to spiral out of control. I became pregnant at 18, and shortly thereafter, my son's father was shot and killed. I thought I would try to do a better job as a parent than my mother and learn that I was extremely unskilled. I would then marry a man who would beat me regularly and became pregnant and had his child. The more my life unfolded in this way, the more I became detached from myself and dove deeper into my addiction. I discovered a self-hatred that no one could top, therefore I felt I had nothing to lose. I had two children by this time and they had been taken by the state. Nothing was stopping me. I was all in with my addiction. I sought drugs with all costs. I went to prison in 1996 and shortly after release used again. I was shot in 1997. I shot someone else and was in a high speed car chase at, which resulted in breaking my arm. I was on my way back to prison for another five years. This pattern had to be broken. I decided as I started my sentence that I would stop using drugs. I stayed clean at that time for five years and two months. I moved to Seattle after my release and changed my life. The death of my, after the death of my grandmother, I used again. After swearing I would not have another child, I got pregnant again 14 years after my last child. I swore I would not let this one down. I relapsed again in 2008. Going back to, it, to prison in 2009, I hugged my, hung my head in shame. It was upon my release that I would meet Ari Cohn. Life didn't immediately improve af after meeting him. I would go through some more struggles with my addiction and abuse before I found myself stable and in recovery. On December 5th of 2012, I was grateful to be arrested for the last time. I made my mind up. I was finished destroying my own life. This last arrest was the interruption in my life that was needed for me to make a lasting change. It is because of the support and belief from the people in the post prison education program I was not sent back to prison. Ari saw something in me when we met that I did not see in myself. When I was arrested, I was prepared to return to prison. I called Ari on the phone and let him know I was safe. I told him I would see him in about five more years. It was then that he asked me not to take a deal. For some crazy reason that I had no idea what it was about, he decided that I was worth a fight and paid for a private attorney. Because of the financial support of post-prison education program, I was able to walk out of jail six months later with a drug court sentence. I was so grateful for the love that he and the program showed that I vowed to change my life. That was nearly seven years ago. While I was in jail, I wrote to Ari about the plans that I had to succeed. Once I was released, I made the decision to stay as close to the post-prison education office as I could. I became a very active participant of the program. I chose to volunteer and spend four days a week in the office when I was not in treatment classes. I started to give back to people in prison struggling just like me. I would coach prisoners through things they were going through and in turn save myself from returning to my past. I also joined Narcotics Anonymous and committed to a program by getting a sponsor, working the steps, and going on to sponsor other women in recovery. Since my release, I have stayed on track and worked diligently to achieve the goals that I said that I would. It is because of people funding the post-prison program that I was able to remain free while finding my footing outside of a prison cell. It is because of funders that I have had the opportunity to save my life and go on to be an example in the lives of my children, hopefully prohibiting them from making the same mistakes that I did. After a few, a few years after my release, my life experienced tragedy again. I was the victim of a violent crime inside of my home. I was brutally beaten and left to die on my kitchen floor. I feared the worst. I thought I might not make it through this. I called on Ari in post-prison, i.e. Keith, to support me through my trials. It was during this time that I realized I needed to return to school. I combated with my experience with service towards others. I started going back inside of prisons while working for an agency helping other people. I began school and I excelled. On December 6, 2019, I will celebrate seven years clean, sober, and thriving. I am raising my youngest child alone and am involved in the lives of my older children. Post Prison was there to support me through the process of my child returning to my care. 
I have become a mountain climber and have summited the three largest mountains in this, in this state just over this summer, as well as many other peaks and treks that I have achieved. I currently supervise three programs with Catholic Community Services. I'll be starting the University of Washington next month on September 25th, pursuing a degree in political science to try to bring some reform to our current system in hopes that people don't, do not have to be caught in the system as long as I was. I graduated the associate's program with honors and have been recruited by many Ivy League schools, including Yale, Columbia, and Cornell, finally deciding to stay local and attend the U University of Washington. Ari Cohn and the post-prison education program have been beside me through it all. They've provided office time, tutoring, a computer to use, and any support that I have needed to help me to achieve my goals. They have shown up for me through all of my struggles and experience. It is because of this program that I have been set free. I ask you to please consider supporting the post-prison education program. People coming out of prison are coming into your communities. Post-prison provides a new path for people to create new lives. Thank you so much for your time and allowing me to share my story with you.